Well, I'll be damned. Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson playing opposite each other once again. Seeing as how I loved The Greatest Showman as much as I did, and I know what you're thinking, I realize that this genre is completely different, but with these two actors attached, I was sold. Hmm. How's it going? My name is Zach, and I love talking cinema and all things entertainment. As always, I really do appreciate you guys stopping by, and I hope you enjoy your stay. This time around, we're looking at Reminiscence, the latest addition to the Warner Brothers HBO Max theatrical release, whatever you want to call it, the simultaneous saga. And this is kind of a sci-fi, kind of a film noir, kind of a romance, kind of a weird amalgamation of all these different genres and... There you go. This is directed by Lisa Joy of Westworld fame and it stars Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson, two of my favorite actors working right now. And this film follows a scientist, played by Hugh Jackman, who discovers a way to relive your past and he uses this technology to search for his long lost love, played by Rebecca Ferguson. All whilst a private investigator uncovers a conspiracy while helping his clients recover lost memories. So I meant everything I said at the top of this video and the trailer for this film made it look super super appealing. I mean, I'm talking this A-list cast involved, the production design, the lush look of this movie, the concept. Oh my gosh, this concept. This is kind of the acid trippy stuff I like seeing in a science fiction feature. You know, kind of like Inception, which is a complete mind f it's all about manipulating dreams and memories in order to complete a heist or go get the girl of your dreams or whatever the objective is. All that stuff I thought was super neat, and I really, really respected how Reminiscence was not afraid to just lean into the strange. Especially with this set design. Reminiscence is set in Miami, Florida, which most of you are aware is a coastal city. Well, in this movie, cars have been replaced with speedboats because the streets of Miami are literally underwater. Like, they're seriously parallel parking these boats like they're offloading the Pirates of the Caribbean ride outside of bars, saloons, what have you. I think this is a super sweet idea for a dystopian film. And I really do think that this production design team should be commended for a job well done. As should Raman Jawadi of Game of Thrones fame who came in to compose the score for this. Now granted, this does feel like a big amalgamation of different musical styles. There's even some points that feel like the swells you would hear in the most iconic westerns you've ever seen. But this is still the Game of Thrones composer and he did a fabulous job with this film. Film. I'd also like to say that I think director Lisa Joy has a really brilliant eye for filmmaking. Her shot composition, I'll admit, is pretty amazing. I especially love how the actors interact with the actual reminiscences themselves. There's certain shots where Hugh Jackman is underwater in certain action points, and it's all actually a pretty euphoric presentation. And let me just say this. In a vacuum, this film can get really, really emotional. That's the key phrase, though. In a vacuum. In a vacuum, these scenes and reminiscence are Oscar-worthy. But I hate to say it, guys. I really did not get into this story at all. I think there's just way too damn much going on. And first of all, great concept aside, I feel like there's a lot about this film that feels way too familiar. Now, I did show off some random Blu-rays in my review for The Midnight Sky a few months ago. Let's just go through this exercise once again, shall we? Now, first off, we have Inception right here. This is an instant classic film which I've already reviewed on this channel. And I already commended the dream heist idea thoroughly. So here's the Blu-ray of it, just for the purposes of this demonstration. And then you're gonna add, I don't know, Chinatown right on top of that, starring Jack Nicholson, instant classic. And then let's put in the beautiful color palette of Blade Runner 2049. Let's just put it on top right there. You, you with me yet? And hell, you might as well just plug in Minority Report as well and put that on top because, well, it's just, it's Minority Report. It's classic Spielberg. And then you just take this stack of Blu-rays, you guys see that right there? And then you just plug it into a machine, you put it into a copier, and bingo, you have reminiscence. I mean, I hate saying that this movie is so familiar to all these superior films. That's key right there. All of these films that I just listed off, better than Reminiscence. And I hate to say that that's true, guys. I just really could not get into this. I mean, even with the clear effort both of its leads are putting into the material, Hugh Jackman is a freaking boss in this movie. I love Rebecca Ferguson as well. But it's just their characters. It's not necessarily their dialogue or anything like that. Like, these characters are just so plain. Hugh Jackman, what does he do? He works at this lab where he can look at these old memories, whether it's to look for lost keys or a lost spouse. That's legitimately his entire character. 
character. Rebecca Ferguson is a club singer who is in love with Hugh Jackman once upon a time. Guess what, guys? That's her entire character. So some fault clearly, I think, should lie with a very one-note and very familiar script. Which, I should also note, I did say earlier that there was a bit too damn much going on in this film, which left me just sitting there utterly confused for the most part. Like, I'm still trying to ponder everything that happened in this film and trying to piece it all together. It's just... <laughs> It's not adding up. And with this concept, I really should have been fully into this movie hook, line, and sinker. I should have been into Reminiscence from scene one. But the movie moves at a snail's pace. And even then, the snail's pace does allow for a lot of explaining to make us try and understand the film. And I was still left sitting there confused. Like, I'm legit still trying to remember everything that happened in this film or even how it ended. That's honestly how forgettable Reminiscence is going to be to me. It really sucks saying that, honestly, because I'm still a big believer in Lisa Joy. I think she's going to go on and be a absolutely tremendous filmmaker. And I think she did a marvelous job directing this movie. I can't wait to see what else she does. But as it is... Reminiscence, unfortunately, just wasn't doing it for me. I'm gonna give this film a C. Damn it, guys. I really wanted to love this one. I just didn't, though. And... Listen, I know a lot of my fellow content creators on YouTube actually adore this film. And you know what? That's totally fine, guys. Maybe I'll reconsider and I'll give this one another shot sometime down the line. But this, unfortunately, just wasn't my jam. As always, though, this is just one guy's opinion. What are your guys' thoughts on Reminiscence? Do you disagree with me? Did you love this film? And I'm also curious. Let me know what your guys' favorite sci-fi action film is. As always, I love creating this content and starting this discussion with you guys. So feel free to make some noise down in the comments section below and let's see where this goes let's have some fun and hey if this is your first time visiting the channel today thank you all so so very much for tuning in and do consider hitting that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can it's totally free and this really really helps me get the content out there as does hitting that thumbs up button on your way out that would be much much appreciated and as always everybody look out for more exciting content hitting this channel very very soon this includes my reviews for the night house and the protege also hitting theaters this past weekend and also keep an eye out for my first review in the day Daniel Craig James Bond playlist in the build up to No Time to Die. We're going to be looking at Casino Royale very soon, and I'm pretty sure that that's your and my favorite James Bond film altogether. But you guys are the best. Again, thank you all for your continued support of the channel up to this point. And with all that being said, back talk, commence. Yeah.